Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and this is an A-level tricky question. Uh, this is a mechanics question from an OCR uh, paper. Uh, don't neglect your mechanics, it's really important that you score highly on you know, all aspects of the maths course. Um, and I know that lots of people find mechanics tricky. If you do find this useful, this content, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do like the video, uh, please do share it with your friends. Uh, I've got some good feedback so far on these, which is really uh, heartening, but I really would love to be able to hit a thousand subscribers by the time the exam season is finished. So if you can help me do that, then that would be absolutely amazing. Right, let's get into the question. Okay, we have um, I and J uh, east and north, as you would expect, and it says T greater than zero, a particle of mass two is moving on a smooth horizontal surface, um, at constant force under action of this and a variable force of this. Determine the value of T when the forces acting on P are in equilibrium. Okay, so let's look at the forces. Now I like to write them as um, column vectors. I find it easier. So we have minus eight and we have minus 54. And we also have added to that is a second force in which we have 4t on top and we have six lots of 2t minus 1 all squared like this. Now when is, when is the object in equilibrium? It's when the forces are balanced. So this will need to equal 0. So let's take the top line and set that equal to 0 because that's going to be the easier one to solve. So here we have that 4t is equal to 8, so that t must equal 2. Now we can also check that that does solve the bottom. I mean, it definitely will because the question has told you it's going to be in equilibrium. But just to double check, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, squared is 9, times by 6 is 54, and then minus 54 there. So yes, it works for both components, so we know that it's good. Okay, now we says it says that it's at rest when t equals zero. It says determine the speed of p at the instant when p is moving due north. Okay, so we're looking at the speed. In order to find the speed, we're going to have to work out um, the acceleration first because we can find acceleration because we have force and we have mass. And we know that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times by the acceleration. So the acceleration which I'm looking for is going to be the sum of the forces, which I've already written out here, divided by the mass. So I'll just need to write out the sum of the forces and then I just need to divide it by the mass, which is two. So writing this out again will give me um, 40 minus eight, uh, but I'll need to divide that by two so that will be 2t minus 4. And over here, I will have 6, 2t minus 1 all squared. I've got to divide that by 2. So it's going to be 3 lots of 2t minus 1 all squared. And minus 54, again, divide that by 2, so minus 27. Okay, so that is the acceleration by taking the sum of the forces, dividing it by the mass, which is 2. Now, I'm interested in the speed, so I'm going to have to work out the velocity. Now, what do we know about velocity? It is the, um, well, we have position, velocity, acceleration. We differentiate down, we integrate up. So we're going to need to integrate the acceleration. So I'm going to integrate the acceleration, which is, um, you know, given just, just below. I don't need to write it out again. And that's with respect to t. Okay, so let's integrate this, this acceleration. So the top line, I'm going to up the power and then divide by the new power. So that's going to give me t squared and I'm going to get minus 4t. And we'll deal with the constant of integration in a second. Um, I'm going to integrate this by using the um, reverse chain rule. I'm going to up the power to a 3 and then I'm going to divide by the new power and I'm also going to divide by the derivative of the bracket. So upping the power to a 3, dividing by 3 will cancel the times by 3 there, and then dividing by 2, which is the derivative, is going to give me a half. And minus 27 is going to go to minus 27t. 
And then I like to write here plus CI and CJ uh, for the constants of integration. Okay, so we need um, we need uh, some initial point uh, or some information to work out those constants. And that is that the P is at um, is at rest when T equals zero. So that means that V uh, V equals zero at T equals zero. Um, so subbing in, I get zero for the velocity, and I'm going to get T is zero. So the top line will be zero, um, and the bottom line I will get zero. Uh, so minus one cubed is um, minus one and times by a half so it's minus a half and then this 27 T will be zero as well and that's plus CI and CJ so reading the top line across tells me that CI must be zero but reading the bottom line across tells me that CJ must be a half so CJ is a half Great, so now I can have a full equation for my velocity. Um, I'll write it here. I'll just replace the ci with a zero and the cj with a half, so plus one half in there. Great, so that's my equation for velocity. Okay, now I need to work out when it is moving due north. Well, when it's moving due north, it's just going upwards. It means it has, it, it has a j component of um, velocity but there is no i component of velocity it's not moving horizontally at all so the i component of velocity um, which in this case is t squared minus 4t that must equal zero at this particular point which tells me that um, if i factorize this I get t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 4. Now t is equal to 0 is when it's at rest, uh, so it can't be that one, so it must be t equal to 4. Okay, now we're looking for the speed, and the speed is the magnitude of the velocity, so first we need to actually work out what the velocity is at that t equal 4 moment. So subbing in, I'm going to get um, the top line, is going to be uh, 4 squared minus 4 times 4, um, which obviously is 0. I, I, I knew that already. We knew it was not traveling in the um, horizontal um, direction. Uh, and this one is going to be 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 1, uh, which is 7, um, and then 7 cubed times by a half, and then I'm just going to work it out. And there we go. I've just subbed it in and that has given me 64. Great. So we get uh, 64 on the bottom. So the speed is the magnitude, but we don't need to. Um, uh, it's just the magnitude of the velocity and that's just 64 because it's only going in one direction. So the speed is the same as the velocity in that direction. Perfect. Right, part C, and I'm going to grab some more space. Okay, we were asked to determine the distance between the positions of P when T equals 0 and when T equals 3. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to work out the position, which is the integral of the velocity. So integrating the velocity, which I've kept over here, up the power, T cubed, divide by the new power, um, up the power to squared divide by 2 which is going to give me 2 so 2t to the to the 2 um, integrating this again I'm going to up the power to a 4 I'm going to divide by the new power so a half divided by 4 is an eighth and I'm also going to divide by the derivative of the bracket which is 2 so dividing an eighth by 2 is a sixteenth and we up the power and then divide by the new power which gives me this and again here I just up the power so I get that and what makes this question a bit trickier is that most of the time we get told a position and a time and that will allow us to work out the constant of integration and then that will allow us to work out a position at a particular time 
But this question is a bit different because they don't give us a, um, a position at any time. Instead, what they ask us to do is just to work out the difference in the positions at zero and at three. So um, we don't need the constant of int integration. We don't need to know exactly what the positions are. We just need to know the difference between them. So if we sub in um, t equals zero, we get um, a position of um, zero, zero at the top. Um, this one won't be zero though, because it will be minus one to the power of four, which is just um, one, and then times by 16, so it'll be a 16th. And then all the rest will be zero. And then when we sub in t equals three, we will get, and you have to trust me on this, I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Um, so once I've subbed it in, I got minus nine, and I got minus one, two, nine, five, over 16 for the J. Okay, so now I just need to work out the, uh, the difference in the components. So the I's have changed by nine, and the J's have changed by um, 100, uh, 1,296 sixteenths. So that's the change in the I, that's the change in the J. To work out the magnitude, I will need to square root the squares of these. And that will give me the distance that the object um, the distance between the two positions, should I say. And when I put that into my calculator, I get 81.5, and that is in meters. Okay, fantastic. Hope you found that useful. If you do, please subscribe, just hit that button there, and send um, and share it with your friends who are also doing A-level maths. Bye for now.